cannabis hemp played a vital role in the development of human civilization as well as the founding of this country. For over 300 years, until 1860, sailing ships dominated international trade and naval warfare. This was also the most expansive period of human migration in history. Hemp was important to the first immigrants to Massachusetts for several reasons. The Mayflower, powered by hemp sails and controlled with hemp rigging, delivered 102 pilgrims to Plymouth Rock in 1620. Some of the larger sailing ships of the day required thousands of pounds of hemp for cordage, sails, and caulking. There could be up to 20 miles of hemp rigging on a single ship. This is the USS Constitution, Old Ironsides, the oldest commissioned warship in the United States Navy. She was built in 1797 and is shown here defeating the British frigate Java off the coast of Brazil in 1812. Old Ironsides never lost a battle and is currently stationed at the Charlestown Navy Yard near Boston. Climb aboard and think back to the day when all of the rigging and sails on this majestic warship were made from cannabis hemp. Hopefully one day in the future we'll see hemp being used again for such a purpose. Cordage for the sailing ships was produced in long and narrow wooden buildings called rope walks. This drawing depicts several rope walks that were on Nantucket Island in the 1700s. The length of the rope walks was equal to the length of the longest piece of rope that could be made there, with many being over 1,000 feet. Rope making was one of the first industries in colonial America. It took over 100 men to create a 20-inch circumference cable-laid rope used to anchor some of the larger ships of the day. Boston's first rope walk was built in 1640, over 370 years ago. It was located at the foot of Summer Street near present-day South Station. Rope making was a very involved process. After the hemp was cultivated, harvested, and dried, its long, vast fibers were removed from the woody inner part of the stem or herds. The rough fiber was then drawn through pointed spikes or hackles to create hemp sliver which was spun into yarn and then spun into cordage and rope of varying diameters. Tar heated to 220 degrees was then added to the rope to increase its buoyancy. This is a map of Boston from 1722 showing several rope walks near the Boston Common, Beacon Hill, and Barton's Point near where Mass General Hospital is today. The British government encouraged the cultivation of hemp in the colonies. Their goal was to have hemp fiber exported to England for the Royal Navy. Bounties were given for growing hemp, and you could even pay your taxes with hemp. Hemp was grown near Rowley and Salem, as well as in the Connecticut River Valley in western Massachusetts. Despite these government incentives, the cultivation of hemp in New England never became widespread. Thousands of tons of hemp fiber was imported from Russia to satisfy the needs of the colonial rope makers. These pictures show the general area where rope walks were. The next time you come to Boston, take your own rope walk and venture back into history by finding the locations of many of the many rope walks that produced the cordage that helped shape this country's future. Just go to hempology.org and download a map and guide. It's a fun way to see this great city and learn something historical at the same time. This is a map of Boston in 1728. It shows the location of a group of rope walks situated along Pearl Street in what is today Post Office Square in Boston's financial district. In 1788, the Federal Procession of Boston listed rope maker as one of the largest groups of mechanics, showing that hemp provided many jobs in early America. By 1800, there were over 150 rope walks throughout America, from Portland, Maine, down to Kentucky. In 1770, Boston was occupied by 2,000 British troops who were notoriously underpaid. Soldiers seeking employment at the nearby rope walks angered the citizens and several skirmishes ensued, culminating when the troops fired into a crowd outside the old state house, killing five people including Samuel Gray, a rope maker. This became known as the Boston Massacre, an iconic event in American history. 
1794, these rope walks burned down and the townspeople of Boston voted to build new rope walks in a less densely populated area just west of the Boston Common as seen in this map from 1814. One of the conditions placed upon the owners of the new rope walks was to build a seawall or dam to protect the land, thus beginning the encroachment on the back bay. Thirty years later, in 1824, this area was no longer remote, and the town of Boston bought the property back for the substantial sum of $55,000. Mayor Quincy had this land annexed to the Boston Common, creating one of Boston's most endearing landmarks, the Public Garden. So, Boston's historic back bay and beautiful Public Garden owe their creation in no small part to the rope walks that once bordered Charles Street. Consider this the next time you're enjoying a ride on the swan boats or strolling down the tree-lined Commonwealth Avenue Mall. Rope walks inspired Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, the most popular American poet of the 19th century, to write a moving poem titled The Rope Walk. In that building, long and low, with its windows all a row, like the portholes of a hulk, human spiders spin and spin. Backward down their threads so thin, dropping each a hempen bulk. At the end, an open door, squares of sunshine on the floor, light the long and dusky lane. And the whirring of a wheel, dull and drowsy, makes me feel all its spokes are in my brain. The poem goes on to describe several of the uses of hemp rope, including rigging for sailing ships and the hangman's noose. Boston's continued growth made finding land for rope walks problematic. As a result, the Plymouth Cordage Company was founded in 1824. Hemp fiber was shipped from Boston to Plymouth, where it was spun into rope and shipped back to Boston for sale and distribution. The Plymouth Cordage Company operated for 140 years and at one time was the largest cordage manufacturer in the world. An entire rope walk was moved from Plymouth to the Mystic Seaport Museum in Connecticut. You can visit Mystic and check out the rope walk and actually see how the hemp fiber was hackled and spun into cordage for the sailing ships of yesteryear. The fact that this rope walk was moved all the way from Plymouth to Mystic highlights the importance of rope making to the shipbuilding industry. The 45-acre site of the Plymouth Cordage Company has been turned into the Cordage Commerce Center, which is home to over 60 businesses and organizations, including Plymouth Rock Movie Studio. It is also the last stop on the MBTA's Old Colony commuter rail line, so you can take the T down to Cordage Park and visit the newly renovated Cordage Museum, where you can learn more about the history of rope making and view some of the artifacts of the Plymouth Cordage Company. In the 1830s, the United States Navy decided that it needed to start making its own cordage, so they built a magnificent rope-making complex in the Charlestown Navy Yard. This rope walk is made of granite and has a slate roof. It opened in 1837 and operated until 1971. It was designed by Alexander Paris, who also designed Quincy Market near Faneuil Hall. This rope walk had steam-powered rope-making machinery. Russian hemp and manila hemp from the Philippines were the primary raw materials used. In 1840, in another effort to help create a domestic hemp industry, a contract was signed for 70,000 pounds of hemp fiber grown in Kentucky. Unfortunately, the fiber was rejected by the Navy because of its inferior quality, decimating the Kentucky hemp industry. Part of the Charlestown rope making complex includes a hemp house where they stored the massive amounts of hemp used, as well as a tar house where tar was heated in preparation for its application to the cordage. The hemp house has been renovated into very nice office space, although the tar house and rope walk still need to be renovated. Here you can see the one quarter mile in length rope walk from the Tobit Bridge. You can see the masts of the USS Constitution in the background. 
This historic landmark is a vivid reminder of the key role that cannabis hemp played in this country's history. While preliminary restoration studies have been performed, much more work is needed to fully restore this monument to its rightful place in the history of American industry, defense, and prosperity.